Hey, a pleasant good night all. Welcome back to Nita's channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Nita's channel. Okay, so our topic for the night is going to be, it's basically on marriage, but it's about getting your marriage in order. This topic for the night is getting your marriage in order. Getting your marriage in order. It is so important. This is so important for persons who are married and are going through some difficult times in their marriage. It's time to get your marriage in order. Okay? It's time to get your marriage in order. Okay, the scripture for the night we're going to read is going to be Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 24. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 24. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Let me read it again. Ephesians 5 verse 24. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. So let the wives be subject to their husband in everything. Support your husband in everything. Submit to your husband in everything. Allow your husband to be the head. <clears throat> we know as women, most women, they like to rule. Some women like consider themselves with this phrase, there's the mommy and the daddy. No, at the end of the day, you're only the mother. You're not the mother and the father. You may be taking on extra role, but you're not the mother and the father. You're just the mother. Okay? Now, we're going to read Ephesians 5, verse 25. <clears throat> Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and give himself for her. Again, Ephesians 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. So even though in Ephesians 5 verse 24, as it's speaking about the wives must be submiss subject or submissive to their husband in everything, be supportive to your husband in everything, it goes on to say, husband, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. That's Ephesians 5, verse 25. <clears throat> We're going on to Ephesians 5, verse 28. So husbands, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Did you guys get that? Ephesians 5, verse 28. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Mm. So, listen to that verse right there. He who loves his wife loves himself. So, if you're a husband and you're mistreating your wife, or you're not loving your wife the way that she needs to be loved, it's because you're not loving yourself the way that you need to be loved. Remember now, this is marriage. You're joined together. The two flesh is now one. So when you look at your wife, it's a reflection of yourself. So if you don't love your wife, you don't love yourself. At the end of the day, when you go before God in marriage, these two flesh now becomes one. So you have to take on that responsibility as a reflection of yourself. Your husband is a reflection of you. Your wife is a reflection of you. So if you treat your wife in a manner that you feel as if you wouldn't do to yourself, you would do it to yourself because again, the two flesh are now one. So you have some persons in relationships, okay, or in um, marriage we're talking about. You have persons in marriage, oh, they grow out of love. <clears throat> that means you stop loving yourself. The day that you stop loving your wife is the day that you stop loving yourself. The day that you stop loving your husband is the day that you stop loving yourself. 
He who does not love. You understand? He who does not love his wife does not love his own body. He who does not love his wife. Let me go back to the scripture so I could get it good. He who loves. Okay. Just as a reverse. It says he who loves his wife loves himself. So on the contrary, he who does not love his wife doesn't love himself. Because if the scripture says he who loves his wife loves himself. Once you love your wife, you love yourself. The love begins to grow. The love begins to show in you and in her. When you stop loving your wife, then all of the argumentative stuff is going to come out. That side of you that isn't really you is going to come out. Because at the end of the day, you're not treating your wife the way that you would treat yourself. You're not loving yourself the way that you should love your wife. Again, the two flesh is one. So it's time to get your marriage in order. It's time to get your marriage in order. And as we talk about in the last clip, marry without divorce being an option. So you're married now. And it's now time to get your marriage in order. Make sure everything in your life and in your marriage line up with the word of God. Make sure everything in your marriage line up with the word of God. <clears throat> now we're going to read Ephesians 5 verse 31. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. That's Ephesians 5 verse 31. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. You hear that? One flesh. That's why it goes on to say, he who loves his wife loves himself. Why? Because you are one flesh. You are now one. You are one. So you are a team. You are one. You are a team. It doesn't matter what you go through. Again, marriage isn't just with the pretty. It's the good, the bad, and the ugly. At the end of the day, you must still love your spouse through it all. Through the good, the bad, and the ugly, you must love your spouse. Okay, and we got to understand that we're now one flesh in marriage. So it's not me doing my own thing. It's not he doing his own thing. Whatever we do, we must do it together. Together. We must come in agreement together and do everything together. Why stop trying to be the husband and the wife? Allow your husband to be the husband and you to be the wife. Husband, love your wives the way that you would love your own self. Be submissive, be supportive and submissive to your wife. Show a love that she be submissive and supportive to you. Get your marriage in order because like we said in the last clip, marry without divorce being an option. So you're in a marriage, you may be going through some stuff. Work it out. Work it out. Marriage is made for a lifetime. A lifetime. Now we're going to read Ephesians 5 verse 33. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself. And let the wife see that she respects her husband. And let the wife see that she respects her husband. And let the wife see that she respects her husband. So wives, you got to respect your husband. Some men don't feel like they're men. When the women don't respect them. Or when the wives feel as if, oh, they're the husband and the wife. Come on. You got to allow your husband to lead you. Just as Christ is the head of man. So is the man or the husband is the head of the wife. So wives, you got to allow your husband to lead. 
Allow him to lead. Be humble. God, I ask God to humble you. Humble you in everything that you do. Even me, I ask God to humble me. Teach me how to be humble. Because I know sometimes I trip off sometimes and I got to realize, hey, I'm the woman. I'm the woman. So wives, you got to allow your husband to lead. Allow your husband to be the head of the home. And you trust God and you pray over your husband each and every day. You pray for your husband each and every day. Trust God. Trust God. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. That's right. He's a miracle working God. He's a wonder. He's the God that performs the impossible. You got to understand it doesn't matter what situation you are faced with in your marriage. Marriage is made for a lifetime. That is your lifetime partner. You understand? It don't matter what situation, trials, or tribulation may come before. You got to understand that you are one. Two flesh are now one. Okay? And you are more, more, better together than apart. Make these marriage last. Make these marriage work. Get these marriage in order. And allow the head in the home to be the head of the home. Wife, sit down. Allow your husband to lead. Allow your husband to lead. We're going to read Ephesians 6 verse 2. Okay. Ephesians 6 verse 2. Ephesians 6 verse 2 is basically talking about honoring your father and your mother, which is the first commandment, the promise that your days, that you may, may be well with you, and that your days upon the earth will be long. And we all want all these things to tie together because once you in a relationship or you're in a marriage, Two flesh becomes one and you know, focus on your little, your own little union. And we got to realize that even though we have our own little unions, if our parents are still around, once their parents are still around, you got to be respectful for them, to them as well. Pray for them. Ask the Lord to cover them, guide them, and keep them safe. And so on. Now let's get back on track. Getting these marriage in order. Get your marriage in order. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, love your husband. Wives, be submitted to your, submissive to your husband. Allow your husband to lead. Just as Christ is the head of the church, the husband is the head of the home. Let the husband be the head of the home. And you wives, do the wife's duties. A lot of marriage are failing, and they don't really have to fail you. Because persons aren't, persons aren't res respecting one another the way that they should. One party is trying to take on two parties' rule. The other party isn't getting enough attention or what's not or so on. You got to focus on each other. Focus on each other. Find out what makes you happy. Find out what makes the next one happy. Both happiness is supposed to matter. You are now one. Your happiness becomes your husband's happiness. Your husband's happiness becomes your happiness. His sadness becomes your sadness. Your sadness becomes his sadness. But you got to be willing. You got to be willing to make it happen. It's 2021, I speak and I declare no failed marriages from here on out. If you're in a marriage, you got to understand that God made marriage for a lifetime. Yes, person get divorced because they get married for the wrong reason. When you're not married for the wrong reason, your relationship is going to last. It's going to last. And people got to realize. Realize. That marriage is all about two. Flesh. Becoming one. So if you're thinking about getting married. Because of citizenship. Getting married. Because of money. Getting married. Because of this and the next. 
and you're not married, stay not married. But for you who are married, there's nothing that God cannot do. And whatever God joined together, no man can put asunder. No man. Okay? So I just wanted to share this little word with you guys tonight about getting your marriage in order. Allowing the head to lead. Your husband is the head. Let him lead. You're the wife. Be humble. Be submissive. Be supportive and respect. That's one thing. It's very important. Respect your husband. Respect him. Respect him. Even the Bible tells you, give honor where honor is due. So the scene was given respect as to where respect is due. You understand? Not because you may feel as if you make more money than your husband. You don't want to respect him. No, it don't work like that. You may make more money than your husband. You still respect your husband. And remember that he's the head of the home. And you guys are not separated. You are one. One flesh. Two flesh. Now one flesh. So that's all I'm going to leave with you guys tonight. It's time to get these marriages in order. And like I always say, thank you guys for tuning in to Nita's channel. Once again, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in, subscribing, and being here just to hear positive feedback, positive outcome, positive words, even inspirational stuff, fun stuff, and so on. This is your girl Nita straight out of the 242. Thank you all for watching. But get those marriages in order. Everyone have a lovely night.